about oxyacetylene welding. I'm going to show you the a book from the FAA uh, that has most everything on how to oxyacetylene weld. Now we'll give you the link to where to print this off um, in the description. On pay, page 518. Now on here it says, a good example for practice and to see how aluminum reacts to a welding flame. Heat a piece of aluminum sheet on a welding bench. Hold a torch with a neutral flame perpendicular to the sheet and bring the tip of the inner cone almost in contact with the metal. Observe the metal s observe that the metal suddenly melts away, almost without any indication, and it leaves a hole in the metal, aka you blow a hole. So we're gonna teach you how to do that and teach you how not to do that so whenever you do, you know what you did wrong. But first, let's take a minute for shop safety. You always wanna have the right gear so you don't burn the crap out of yourself. Now here, I have my gear. I have my aluminum goggles that you can't, you only have to use these for aluminum. From the sodium flare of the flame. So it can ruin your eyes. So you have to have these special lens. Um, and then you need to have leather gloves and a leather vest to protect your chest and blow. Now, the gloves are probably the biggest thing because you're, whenever you're welding, your rod starts to heat up and you can burn the snot out of your fingers. And also, um, if you're not careful, and if you don't have one of these or any type of neck coverage, whenever you pick up your rod like I did a long time ago, you can burn the snot out of your neck and almost blow a hole through your neck. Fire extinguisher. You always want a fire extinguisher because if anything goes wrong, oh, well you better have something there to go and blow that thing out. Now let's show you how to set up your torch. Now here we have the DHC2000 um, Cobra torch. I like this because it more has a TIG feel whenever you hold it. You can hold it like this, you can hold it like this. If you shoot a gun, you might want to hold it like this because it's kind of like a pistol. Over here we have our oxygen and our acetylene. The first thing you want to do is you want to turn on your valves. Now, you want to open your oxygen all the way. So whenever you push it in, it turns on your gas. Now, using the hammer on, you want to use at least 4 PSI, or at most 4 PSI. There we go. Now, on the acetylene, you want to only use a quarter turn. Because if you have any more, you're going to have a big flame. The reason why you have a quarter turn is so you could have a big flame and you can burn your uh, shop down. And also, you want to be able to turn it off quickly if something goes wrong. Now, the same thing with the uh, acetylene dials. Turn them in to turn the gas on. 4 PSI and shut off. Now our torch is ready. So let's learn to light it. So now that we're ready, we're going to um, turn on our torch. First thing you want to do is turn on your acetylene. Now you want very little acetylene so you don't have a big flame whenever you start it. Now that's a little too high to my liking, so I'm going to turn it down to a little feather. Now once you see that feather, you know that you're at the right amount of acetylene. Now once you turn on your oxygen, you will see that a cone will start to form. I hope that you'll see that cone on the camera. Now, now we're going to preheat the metal. Just kind of get it hot so it doesn't take a while. Burn a hole. Unless some spiel. Now if you look at our bricks, we can you can see that they previously welded with steel because there are scraps of steel on it and it sparks. Now that we've preheated about 30 seconds, we're going to show you how to burn a hole. Now, what the book said is to have your torch perpendicular and get your cone right down in there. There we go. Now that we've blown a hole. Pull your pull back. Now we've blown a hole. Oh. Now we're going to hold it at a 30 degree angle so it doesn't blow a hole this time. Now, of course, you can't measure with your hand 30 degrees, so we'll just take a guess. You're going to want to hold it like a TIG torch if you've ever seen one. It's kind of like a pencil, almost. Now that we have it like a TIG torch and we're comfortable, 
we're able to control our angle a lot better. Now hopefully we don't set the shop on fire. Now we're going to see if we can create a puddle and make it move and not blow a hole. We did not change our flame one bit, so if you've blown a hole before, you don't have to change your flame. I do the swirl, we're able to move it. We're able to move the metal around. It's kind of fun. Because you play with heat and play with metal. Now, since we didn't put any flux on it, it took longer to go through the oxide layer. Now we're going to put some flux on it so it breaks through the oxide layer so it's easier to get it hotter quicker. If I can grab it. Yeah. Now you can hear the flux burning because of the heat. Now that we have some flux on it, let's go and break through that oxide layer. And it'll melt a lot quicker. The flux will damage your eyes, and that's what the orange flare is. So you have to wear these special goggles. Now, I've already kind of got a puddle, and you, if you can on the camera, see it kind of dip down? Here, I'll go to the edge to show you the difference. See that? Get them out there. Get them working with you to where they're using their hands and not sitting on their butt. I thank my dad for letting me do this and taking his time and money. Even though sometimes I do want to play video games since I'm still 11. But I mean, sometimes I think, well, I want to go weld instead of go playing video games. But again, just go get them out there, helping, wrenching on your bike, wrenching on your car, whatever you're doing. Everybody for watching, and I really hope it was um, informational for you to learn how to blow a hole, or really not to. Please like and please subscribe. Thank you.